Hark, the Triumph Herald sing. It's a triumph of style, I would say. What a wonderful, pretty little car. In the late 50s and 60s, there was a man who liked drawing cars. And he was called Michelotti. And he thought, oh, I know to design a car today. Today, the Triumph Herald looks like a diddy little thing. That's because it is a diddy little thing. I know all about diddy little things. The wheels are not the smallest I've ever seen, but they are quite small. And look at this. Look at the angle on that steering. 45 degrees. That means you can turn around. That is very useful for changing direction. I'll bet you can clearly see some American influence with these fins on the back of there. It's like a diddy American car, but it's, it's less vulgar. In fact, it's not vulgar at all. I actually don't know where to start in describing all of the lovely lines on this car because it just seems to be endless lovely shapes and lines that somehow all fit together to make a car that looks wonderful. From the pointy fin bits on the back to a similar design on the roof there which would obviously help slightly as a sunshade. This rather thick roof line looks fantastic. The way it tapers off into this tiny bit at the bottom there it's it's, that really is exceedingly small. Going to talk quite a lot about small things today. I can see it upright windscreen there. And then this bonnet. This bonnet appears to be really rather long, actually. The Triumph badge on the front there, making sure that you know what car you've got. And this rather fantastic stainless steel strip up the bonnet there. The front of it looks a bit like a 1960s teacher. I actually come to think of it, my granddad had some glasses that looked like that and he wasn't a teacher, so maybe that's wrong. But he must have been, otherwise he wouldn't have had glasses like that. On the passenger side we have this rather cluttered feature window with how many stickers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 24 stickers. There's room for more on there. I reckon you get another 5, 6 on there. Yeah. That's what it looks like with the bonnet open. With the bonnet up like that, it looks like a Power Ranger. Why don't more car manufacturers do this kind of thing? Because everything is accessible. You see that? That's an engine. Most cars, you open it up and you've got like a plastic cover. And you need to remove plastic covers before you can do anything. That's got it all there, so you can see it. You can see what things are. From a time when people learned about what cars were, never mind what colour they were. Well, they're all grey now anyway, aren't they? So with an engine like this, you have some idea of what's actually going on. You can see there's a coil there, you can see there's leads, you can see there's a dizzy cap, you can see there's an oil cap, you can see there's a radiator, you can see there's a carburetor that's there. I'll tell you what it's called, but I've forgotten. You needed to change one of these suspension component bits just down there. You could, because you can see where it is. That's a good thing. That's the air filter, not the air conditioning unit. And yeah, some other stuff there as well. Right, cars have boots. And this is this car's boot. And I can open this up with this lever. Lift up like that, and it opens. And it stays open. That's how the boot is kept open, which is a jolly good idea. They should do something like that these days. The boot is, as you can see, of a decent size. And there's the fuel tank, right on the side of the car. So maybe if you've got a full tank of fuel, it's going to be a bit lopsided. The various things that a man should keep in his uh, boot, antifreeze, fuel, a metal thing, and a toolkit. But there's no sandwiches, and that's the bit I'm a bit confused by. That is where he keeps his 10 mil spanner. 10 mil, that's metric. What's going on there? The next thing for me to do is to climb inside the car and see what it's like. Push, pull, frameless. Mmm, I like that. Well, as we can see, it's a rather tidy little interior. And when I say tidy, 
I was one letter out because I meant tiny. Here is inside with the seat folded forward, kept in place by the sun visor. That may well have been a design feature. Probably not though. I'm going to get into the back of this little car and see what it's like. Uh, I'll tell you what it's like. It's very self-closing door. It's uh, snug. It's nice. It's a very, very soft, spongy seat and I can feel the give in the suspension as well, which is nice. I can imagine you bounce along quite a bit in the back. Heads very close to the rear window, which, um, well, I don't really mind as long as that's where it stays. Uh, from the back seat here, you can see a very good view of the front seat. In fact, it feels almost like I'm sat in the front seat while I'm in the back seat. I'm very close to it indeed. Let's climb back out and climb into the front, I think. Apparently you can fit three adults in the back of there, but you'd have to be very strategic about where they sit. You can't just bung them in, all right? Right, let's see what it's like from the front. Well, first of all, I would say this uh, driver's door is exceedingly close to my elbow and my arm. So, so that probably might have been the start of the elbow drivers, the uh, driver's suntan thingy. Look at that. There's nowhere else for it to go. You can't really keep it in the car. Inside we have this lovely uh, wooden dash that's had lots and lots of lacquer on, some of which is, of course, cracking. As, uh, as you'd expect from a car that's over 50 years old. But the instruments are all quite clear and easy to understand. Speedometer, temperature gauge, fuel, we all know what those are. Wiper motor over this side. Uh, oh, is that for the steering wheel? Looks like it's for the steering wheel. Lights, choke, heated rear screen. And that stereo, I had no idea they had stereos that looked like that in the 60s. Well, I've just been corrected on a couple of these dials, which is possibly a good thing. Yeah, that doesn't move the steering wheel at all. It just changes the direction of the airflow. What a, what a silly thing to think. Imagine having a reach and rake steering wheel on a car that you can't even move the seat on. Look, this is a glove box and that just feels really nice, the way that closes there. A proper quality feel. Quality feel. Quality feel triumph. If there is a car, it was a car where quality was important. British engineering, proper British quality. <sighs> uh, I don't know why I'm talking about it like this. I'm wandering off over here when I should be taking it for a drive. Should I do that instead? as uh, easy to engage as, as I was expecting. Third gear. That's the thing actually, third gear is uh, better than those have junction in second. What a delightful noise it makes. It's just really fruity sound. It sounds like it's going to be going really quickly. Even when you're not going really quickly. Quite a lot of vibration. I'm not sure whether that's a standard thing or whether it's an age thing really gentle with those gears there. Indicator on the wrong side. I can feel it kind of unsettling of the wheels as you take a roundabout there. Not unreasonable speed as well. My favourite thing so far has to be looking out over that unusually shaped bonnet. Kind of reminds me of uh, Dracula's collar. 
behind, although I'm a driver here at the moment. And I don't mind. I just stay behind. You can film me, put it in your video. It's not quite like anything else I've ever driven this. The pedals are quite a long way offset and made for feels like really tiny feet and I've never had to learn to drive a car like this normally you, all the cars are a bit more difficult but still the most stuff is pretty much in the right place and I'm pressing my brakes there stamping on my own foot I had a learner driver here and I'm struggling as much as uh, she is that's fine stall as much as you like <laughs> Say the steering is nice and accurate. The nice feel to the steering actually. That's the bit I like the most so far. Brakes take a bit of getting used to as well. They're not overly assisted. Is there, yes, there is a servo on there. It's just not a bit. There isn't a servo on there. That's why. You don't need a servo. Every time you go through a gear, you've got to just check that you're getting the right one. So I think I'm getting to uh, like this a bit more now actually. This has the old car smell of petrol and interior, and that's what I can smell. Lots of interior, lots of unburnt petrol. I like them. Come on, you can let me go there. We're currently in a housing estate doing the speed hump challenge, and the challenge is to go over enough speed humps without somebody coming up behind you getting impatient. Always find quite curious working in this yard is that from here I can see the house I grew up in just behind me over there and I remember being about seven or eight years old and listening to the cars and I first understood what a boy racer was zooming up kiln lane cracking one off <laughs> speeding up kiln lane there and the car I associate with boy racers from that time was the Triumph Herald because this car would have only been eight years old at the time. It seems that cars of uh, about 10 years old are the tradition for boy racers because they're no longer really expensive, but they usually haven't gone rotten or fallen apart. They're perfect for messing around with, making louder, making faster. 